Now, before you got into music, you had kind of a rough life. Very. Your mom had 11 kids by 10 different men. Exactly. So were you guys all living together or were you oh, kind of okay. spread out? This is how it went. We were set up. This, 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 this was well orchestrated. They said, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to free the slaves. We're going to leave them certain lands and certain properties, knowing that we did not allow them to read, write, spell, knowing that we did not allow them no schooling. And when we did give them schooling, it was segregated. So we're going to leave them property, not knowing that five, ten years from now, that we're going to take the property from them because they didn't pay their taxes. Okay? We went from that to, okay, now that's all from welfare, that's all from WIC, that's all from food stamps. Free health care was they call Medicaid. Okay, now let's build a project. This is a this is a ghetto environment to the fullest, but we're gonna give them things like one dollar rent, free park and recreation for their kids, for summer programs. But hold on, you can't have no man staying with you. You can't have no man, so as growing up, as Every year, every other year, I would meet a different guy as a mentor. To me, back then, I looked at it as a curse. Now, as I think of it, it was a blessing. All of which who accepted a role at the time that they, know, they did not know it was impossible for them to play. A, a, a position that they did not know that was impossible for them to keep because if a man lived with you, you would get evicted and lose your hood. If your child caught a charge, you have to sign custody over to this child to another parent, a family member, or somebody close that's not living in the hood, and you have to reassign their schools and all this. So while I'm thinking, all these men are going to do the same thing. They're going to get my mama pregnant, and they're going to run out of her life. I didn't realize all this because... We were young, 50, 60 kids in one classroom. They paying the teachers between 30 and $40,000. That ain't even enough money for them to pay back that high ass loan that they got the, the uh, education degree in. So with all that being said, we learned things like survival, our era, my era, your era. We learned things like raking yard, running errands, uh, pumping gas at the gas station. Bagging groceries at the store, selling water, selling fruit, selling lemonade. We learned all those things that as years went by, they required permits. <laughs> so while we was trying to get out of the ghetto, we was getting pushed further and further back in, in the ghetto. And the way I grew up, a four bedroom with 12 people, when I sang a song, Drawing the Wind, Pearl Way said more like me, referring to the boys, because eight boys and three girls. And I said, if it wasn't home before them, it wasn't no more covers, that's the comforters. You know, we, you know, we, we use a different slang in, in Miami. And if I say the old girl, the old girl means mama, old boy means daddy. And mama usually gets all the props and all the respect and all the attention in the ghetto because remember, daddy can't live there. So at this time, the mailman, the garbage man, and the county workers, they get all the pussy. So mm -hmm. all the illegitimate kids, fathers, work on the docks, work for the county, and do all these things. So they say, okay, you know what? These ladies are trying to have all the sense. That's cut them off welfare. So now, no more welfare. In order for you to get food stamps, you got to... Go down there, put your baby daddy on child support, and you got to know where your baby daddy at. And my mama era, where your baby daddy? I don't know. I don't know who my baby daddy is. I was drunk. I was on drugs. I, I was surviving. Blah, blah. Okay, sign here. Now, community hours. We need to know where your baby daddy at. We need his social security number, his address. If he in jail, we need to know what jail he in. We need to know the cell number, the DC number. That's impossible. So they give the lady food stamps for so many months. And when they find the dude, He's already in the rear. So now there's a separation from mother 
between mother, father, and kid is the kid is in the middle of it, getting pulled and tugged. The daddy is trying to explain, I was doing what I can for you. And the mama was like, no, he didn't. He left us in the project. And, and now the kid has to choose mama or daddy. So that's what we come to now. That's the, that's the, I am a product of my environment. But I was, I was fortunate enough to successfully be released from prison at the age of 19 after being twice before I was 17 and start a career with the great, by the grace of God and the help of Luther Campbell and Ted Lucas at Slip and Slide Records to, to have helping financially take care of my family up until this point here. And if anybody tell me there ain't a God, it's got to be the devil that's talking. Yeah, I mean, I think that's an excellent point because the system is, it financially incentivizes women to have broken homes, to not have men in the house. The more kids you have, the more money you have. Where if you think about it, if you do it the opposite way and say, okay, look, here's two low-income people, we're going to give them more money if they're together, if they get married. Right. You know what I'm saying? If they, if they, if you create a two-parent household, because I don't if care you stay what together, woman you are. If your kids graduated yeah. school, if they kept a right. certain grades point average. But, right. uh, but, uh, but it's opposite of that. So this yeah. will be living in, and just like with, you know, I've been dealing with lupus for the last 14 years. You, you're familiar with it. You did a, a story on it before. And yeah. what bothers me about the lupus is not what people saying, are you sure you have lupus? Or, Ugh, what is lupus? It's not sexually transmitted. For one, it's not hereditary, so that don't mean my kids necessarily gonna have it. And like every disease that exists in the United States of America, there's never a damn cure. They use us as lab rats and they make us test all these medicines and charge us all these amounts of money if and if the medicine works. And it's always they trying to maintain or control diseases instead of trying stem cell research, instead of trying free medical, free health care like Canada and other countries do. And they give me a, a pill for lupus, which is an antibiotic um, steroid, and they give me another pill for something they can't even explain. But then they give me three other pills, one for my blood pressure, one for my kidneys and one for my liver. And I'm like, okay, I came in this motherfucker with nothing, left out with lupus. Now I'm going out with five pills with a possibility of a kidney or a liver failure. Fuck it, throw all the pills away, i die from lupus. I have a better chance with the one thing. And we need to learn, we need to, we need to get our kids more educated. We need to prepare them more for the future and, and notice that nothing stays the same. Everything changes and we need to, we need to kind of reverse that role where people are constantly dying. There's people our age and younger that are having heart attacks and strokes and aneurysms. We never heard of that growing up. Only thing we heard of our grandma when they hit 50 or 60, talking about their knees and their back and, and heartburn. Okay, that's understandable. But you, you 35 year olds dying from massive heart attacks and aneurysms, this is ridiculous, man. We, we, got to, we got to let, if we can't figure it out, we got to set the stage for our kids to be able to do what they need to do in order to become grandparents one day.